So this is a rant video on the 5090. This is not a review. This is a more of like just documenting my experience on gaming with the 5090 for a couple days because now I've had a chance to actually take it for a spin. I also let my friend Ian, who's a diehard PC gamer, use the GPU and got his thoughts on MFG or multi-frame generation, which is the feature that Nvidia has been heavily touting for this 50 series family and quite deceptively. Nvidia was making claims like the 5070 is gonna be as fast as a 4090. And while that might be true in regards to the output frame rate, it's specifically done with multi-frame generation with MFG at 4X, which means AI is creating and inserting three fake frames in between each pair of consecutive real frames that are rendered. And that's gonna come at a cost. The cost is image quality, and the cost is latency. Output frame rate alone does not sum up the entirety of the gaming experience. And Nvidia has failed to say any of this with their claims that a 5070 is gonna be equal on, on par to a 4090. It's a, it's a dick move and they should, they should rightfully be dragged through the mud for it. But for now, I wanna talk about my experience, like I said, with MFG personally, because nobody else is talking about it because nobody else has a 5090. You can't get these cards. It was a paper launch Nvidia made five of these GPUs, and I have two of them. So I was curious, what the hell do average gamers think about these cards? What's their experience been like? I'm sure some of you might be thinking that as well. Before we continue, this video is brought to you in part by cdkeyoffer.com. So I have three desktop PCs that I regularly bounce between, and all of them are running activated copies of Windows from keys that I got on cdkeyoffer.com. I've used many key sites in the past, but CD Key Offer is the only one I've never had an issue with. I've never had a bad key. I've never had to call customer service. I've never had to email customer support, and I've never had to activate Windows over a phone, which is super fun. Right now, you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for around 22 bucks, but wait, add it to your cart. Use the 25% discount code BW20 at checkout, and the price drops to just $16.93. Buy Grabthar's Hammer, what a savings. To use your new key, just go to your purchased orders from the drop down menu to view and copy the key once you get there, and then paste that key into the Windows activation page. Voila! You've got an activated OS that's also eligible for a free upgrade to Windows 11. Alternatively, you can skip the upgrade and buy Windows 11 Pro directly using the same code BW20 to snag the OS for around 23 bucks. Activate the key using the aforementioned steps and get the full Windows experience easily and affordably. Thanks again to cvkeyoffer.com. Now back to the main video. So I was curious, what the hell do average gamers think about these cards? What's their experience been like? I'm sure some of you might be thinking that as well. <sighs> you still haven't come to the right place because the lens that I'll be explaining this through, that I'll be sharing this through is, is from uh, that of a privileged position, right? I have a $2,000 graphics card and I have a $1,000 gaming monitor. It's a 4K 240 Hertz OLED display from Asus, by the way. Thank you, Asus, for letting me borrow this. And, and, and so it does not reflect in the slightest the average gamer setup. But maybe it does reflect the average high-end gamer setup. So you have to look at it from that perspective because that this is the hardware that I'm currently using. The other thing is that I've only been playing Cyberpunk. That's the only game I've really tested so far with the 5090. MFG is bound to behave differently on a title by title, game by game basis, but I do feel that if you were to only test it with a single game, Cyberpunk is a pretty good one because it's graphically intensive. It is a relevant game. It's popular, has a huge player base. It's not some obscure indie game that no one's ever played. And it is varied. So it's, it's first person shooter, but you can jump into a car, hop on a motorcycle, and it's third person as well. So it gives us some variety in terms of how we look at and how we test MFG. Now, right off the bat, MFG is very confusing to me anyway, because sometimes when it works well, it, it can be great. And I'm like, this is, this is awesome. This is actually a really nice feature. And when it doesn't work well, it really sucks. And sometimes when you really want it to work, it just, it just gives you the finger and you're like, I hate you, this is dumb. Let's talk about the good first. I like MFG. And when I say MFG, I'm, I'm talking about like 4X, right? It goes up to 4X, that means three AI generated frames are being inserted in between each pair of consecutive rendered frames, which has been fine when my base frame rate, meaning the frame rate that I'm getting before I enable frame generation uh, is, is decent, is already around 80 to 100 plus frame, frames per second. In that case, MFG at 4X is great when I'm walking around the city, running around the city, driving, 
just exploring, going, going, you know, bouncing around between missions. And when I'm doing that, and just kind of in chill mode, MFG 4X adds a lot of smoothness, a lot of overall smoothness when I'm looking around, you know, just people watching. MFG works really well for that use case when the priority isn't on latency. When you can, when you can sacrifice a little bit of latency and you're like, yeah, you can feel it, but it's, it's not a huge deal because you're not doing anything super important. Um, you just wanna enjoy the game, take it all in. It can work Battle. great. But the second I jump into a firefight, I don't want anything to do with MFG. I wanna turn that shit off. And this is just me again, but I would rather sacrifice that bit of added smoothness for instantaneous response. That, uh, that, that extremely low latency, low input lag, so that I can just pop, 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 do my thing, kill all the bad guys till they're gone. I want, if I'm going full John Wick, John Wick hates MFG. Let's put it that way. John Wick hates MFG, but you know who loves MFG is uh, Franklin. <laughs> Kick back, relax, enjoy that buttery smoothness, Frankie. And because of this, MFG feels like it has a lot of potential. What if we had adaptive MFG? Have the algorithm detect what we're doing and switch it on and off depending on that. Have it on 4X when I'm just cruising, when I'm in chill mode. And the second it detects that I'm in a battle, turn that shit off so I don't have to think about it. Trading smoothness for latency and responsiveness on the fly, dynamically, without any user input. Of course, still allow that option for manual adjustment, but it's gotta be adaptive. I think, I think that's where it's really going to shine the most because it's so, it's so finicky. It's so finicky. Sometimes you really want it and it's great. And sometimes you really don't. And it's just not practical to keep going in and adjusting that yourself. If you're using MFG when your frame rate is crap already, let's say you, you've cranked up all the eye candy and you're getting like 30, 40 frames per second in Cyberpunk, which, which I was with all the stuff turned on, path tracing and all that. MFG sucks. It sucks a lot. 2X is okay at best, uh, but 3X, 4X, it becomes a blurry mess because you're, you're having to spread out the frames. All of your generated frames are more spread out there's more predicting going on. There's, there's, it's a, they're taking wilder guesses uh, as to what the frame should be. And the end result, at least in Cyberpunk, in my experience, is a blurry mess. It, it looks like you're drunk in GTA. It's a terrible experience. It's virtually unplayable. It looks like garbage. It just looks bad. And the artifacting also gets a lot worse the higher you go with MFG. 4X is gonna be more artifacting than 3X. 3X is more than 2X. The only thing that, that saves it here is, is the blurriness. I was so distracted by the blurriness, I had to like actively look past it to find the artifacting. It's just a combination of multiple bad things. So don't expect, you know, there's this, I think Nvidia tried to sell MFG, made it seem like your, your crappy little GPU with MFG is gonna be uh, rivaling a 4080 Super. That is not how it works. You need a solid base frame rate before you apply frame gen for it to really shine. Otherwise, it can prove to be a terrible experience. And even if you have a good base frame rate that matches the output of say a 4090, the GPU's render rate, how often it renders a real frame, will drop because it's allocating resources to make those AI generated frames. Not to mention the increase in latency, which is a bane to anything competitive, and depending on your sensitivity to input lag, can make fast-paced games feel sluggish. And you know, it was a little hard for me to tell if I was really able to discern the latency impact from frame gen versus no frame gen, or if it was just placebo effect. So in order to put that to rest, I decided to do a blind A-B test with myself and my friend Ian, who is also an avid gamer, the results were in some ways very expected and, and in others, extremely surprising. Take a look. This feels a little sluggish to me. This is definitely frame gen, I think, because it feels smooth. I can tell it's a high frame rate, but like going to aim and stuff, it feels like there's just a little bit of lag pulling my gun up, looking down the sights. This feels much snappier. Um, I feel like it's just a lot more responsive. If I would guess this is, this is either 2X frame gen, like a lower frame gen, a more mild setting, or it's native. But I can tell like the latency is much improved from the last one. This also feels like a bit of latency. 
Doesn't feel as snappy as the last one. Second test felt the best in terms of input lag. This feels better than the first one, but not quite as low latency as the second test. While I was definitely able to feel the higher latency of AI-generated frames, I confused 2x with 4x, thinking 4x had less latency, which clearly isn't the case. It was simply the smoothness of 4x's higher output frame rate that I mistook for responsiveness and lower input lag, making it feel better than 2x, much to my surprise. But let's see what Ian had to say. All right, so go ahead and uh, give it a whirl. Let me know how that feels. Solid. That's pretty locked on. Like I'm not, I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling input lag. It is doing exactly what I want it to do when I move the mouse. How's the frame rate feel? Frame rate is a little, a little lower. Probably around 80-ish, maybe. How would you say this compares? This is higher frame rate. Crosshair is a little bit unlocked. Like, I don't feel that perfect one-to-one -one relation between my mouse movement and the mouse cursor. It's doing what I want it to, but it doesn't feel as solid locked relationally. There's something in between my mouse movement and the mouse cursor responding on the screen. Um, I'm gonna say 4x. No, this is this is probably 2x based off the frame rate. I don't know. And it's, it's hard. I feel like I feel yeah. like a final answer is this is 4x. So that is actually 2x. Ah. Yeah. So you, we we both made the same assumption. And hmm. maybe maybe it could be the fact that 4x is has a faster frame rate technically. Yeah. But I think ultimately we're in agreement. There is there is some noticeable input lag on either one. Yeah. Definitely. Which of these experiences do you prefer, I guess, in a game like this um, that's first person? Would you rather take the low latency uh, but lower frame rate or more latency with higher frame rate? I think I would possibly be willing to compromise. Like the first time I used a wireless mouse, I think that was like Battlefield Battlefield 3 or something, and I could feel input lag, uh, and I could feel it affecting my gameplay, and then I kind of got used to it, and it, was, it didn't go away, but I had adjusted to it to the point where I felt like it was really pretty minimal impact. I feel like I could do the same with this. This, If this is gonna be much higher frame rate and a little bit of input lag, I, I, could, probably, I could probably get used to it. Uh, especially if it wasn't an FPS. If it was a competitive FPS, I would just lower the graphics settings and turn off frame generation if I wanted to have higher frame rate. If I'm playing like competitive, I don't really care so much about the graphics. In fact, you know, like with Overwatch, I would turn the graphics down simply to minimize distractions or like, you know, not render bushes that enemies could hide behind. So I didn't really care so much about the graphical fidelity, that's just me. But let's say I was playing whatever Battlefield 5 is and it's, let's imagine it's awesome. I would probably have frame gen turned on, um, at least initially. And if I felt like I, I was you know, really being hampered by it, I would probably turn it off, but I would, I would give it a shot. I would try to get used to it and adjust to it. Well, you were completely right. You hit the nail on the head uh, the first session that you had was frame gen off and what you're playing now is 4x frame gen i mean it it's cool it looks really good it's it's amazing frame rate and it's going to come down to individual preference on the input lag thing knowing that this feature is pretty much the focal selling point that Nvidia is touting. Do you feel like it's worth getting hyped over? Uh, I think it's pretty, it's a neat feature. I don't think that I would necessarily get super hyped for it, but I'm fairly spoiled to have a nice 40 series now. If I could get a good deal on a 5090, I would definitely get one, but I can't, so I won't. And I'm gonna be happy with what I got. People can't well, even get a bad deal on a 5090 right now. It's crazy. So I'm gonna stick with uh, what I have, which is I can generate one frame per one frame rendered. I've been doing that for a while. I went, I, I was playing Cyberpunk on and off, I, turning that setting on and off, and I eventually settled with it on. 
and it hasn't been hasn't been bothering me. I got used to it. You're you're always going to have somebody who is very insistent that they have no input lag or absolute minimum, and this feature is not for them. Um, I think for everybody else, they're going to be happy with it. As to whether it's worth the money, that's that's another individual thing. So there are the results and some uh, some very insightful words from Ian as well. Um, I think the biggest thing that stands out to me is that both of us preferred the feel of Forex MFG more so than just the standard frame generation at 2X. Our brains preferred the added smoothness of the higher frame rate than it did the lower latency provided by 2X. So like I said earlier, MFG can be really nice when the conditions are right. It's just hard to predict what those conditions are. It's gonna depend on so many things, what you're doing, uh, the movements that you're making, the scene that you're rendering, the game that you're playing, and that's exactly why MFG is such a wild card in the first place. It doesn't quite shit rainbows all the time, as NVIDIA would have you think. And circling back at the end here to the 5090, I think the card itself stands on its own without any DLSS AI. Uh, it's 30% faster in rasterization performance than the 4090. That's, that's pretty damn fast. For two grand, that's up to you. That's gonna be ultimately up to the consumer whether or not they wanna justify that price for the fastest gaming GPU on the market right now. Fortunately, you have time to decide whether or not you're gonna buy a 5090 because right now, no one can. There's just no stock available for the 50 series or it's been extremely low and uh, pretty frustrating for, for gamers, people trying to get one at a reasonable non-scalped price. But we'll see how that shakes out in the next coming weeks. That's gonna do it for this one. Thank you very much for watching and special shout out to all of the members, all the semis and chubs keeping it rock hard. Thank you guys for all the support on that. It's been fun doing the membership thing. Um, we'll do some more posts there soon and more content on the way. Guys, have a good one. I will see you in the next video.